योग कर्मसु कौशल माई सेल्फ नीता शाह फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी टूडे वी विल सी समथिंग अबाउट फाउंडेशन ऑफ न्यूटोनियन मैकेनिक्स The content of this talk consists of foundation of Newtonian mechanics, Newton's laws of motion. Then we will see about validity of Newton's laws, perception for application of Newton's laws, and lastly we will see example. The three fundamental quantities for Newtonian mechanics. are mass motion and force let us see this fundamental quantities one by one mass is the quantity of matter which is the measure of strain arising from its density and bulk conjointly the quantity of motion is the measure of the same arising from the velocity and quantity of matter conjointly let us see force here you can see in this figure that we have a push which is a force it is somebody is pushing an object so we call it a push which is a force here we have a pull that is also a force but we all know about the gravitational force so gravity extends a force between all massive objects without con contact also and the force of attraction from the earth is called the weight force we have contact forces in these two figures one is horizontally to x axis and second one is slightly inclined but in both the figures you can see vector n which is a normal force occurs when an object pushes on a surface and the word normal itself suggests that the force is perpendicular to the surface here you have a norm you have a horizontal surface a body is moving on it and normal force is there we have one more force which is fractional force and it acts parallel to the surface of the contact and that is what i have shown here okay any force can have can be bifurcated into components in two dimension the first figure is a body is pulled with a force f we can have in the second figure we can have this force into two different directions f of x suggests the force in x direction that is in horizontal axis and fy suggests force in the vertical direction and the, this follows our cartesian system of plane that is x and y axis now we are in a position to define force we will define two different versions of the force and then we will see how it can be interpreted and inert forces of matter is a power of resisting by which everybody as much as in it lies continues in its present state whether it be of the rest or moving uniformly forward in a right line so what this in a simple words a body remains in a either 
rest or in a motion unless and until force is applied second version of definition of force is an impressed force is an action exerted upon a body in order to change its state either of rest or of moving uniformly forward in right line if we read both the definitions again and again it gives rise to the famous three laws known as newton's laws of motion so now let us uh, have a look at the newton's laws first law says that every body continues in its state of rest or of uniform rectangular rectilinear motion except if it is compelled by force acting on it to change the state second law says the change of motion is proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction of the straight line along which the force is acting and third law we are very familiar with to every action there is always an equal and opposite reaction or the mutual actions of any two bodies are always equal and oppositely directed along the same straight line now let us solve newton's laws and for that we want to find r of t r of t is distance that is at any point of time t obviously r of t is zero when body is at rest for all time in general we have r of t in the direction of x y and z so we say x of t y of t and z of t this is cartesian form or i can have spherical form that is r of t theta of t phi of t first let us uh, talk about the cartesian form in cartesian form r of t is v x t plus x not zero v z t plus z zero minus z t square by two and uh, r of t represents uniform that is v uh, v x t that is velocity in the direction of x axis with v x as the velocity in the state of rest in the direction of y axis and having a uniform velocity v of z and a free fall in the gravitational field here this gt square by 2 defines a free fall in the gravitational field in general mechanics of particles is divided into three parts first one is classical mechanics then we have non relativity stick which is uh, nothing but the newton's laws and third one is relativity which is actually the spatial theory of relativity uh, in classical mechanics its uh, basis is uh, quantum mechanics for non relativistic schrodinger equation is the basis and for relativ uh, relativistic uh, mechanics, we have a direct equation. And these are the basic tools for uh, different mechanics observed in the either classical mechanics or non-relativistic or relativistic physics. Newton's first law of motion, what it gives? It gives a definition of force and in, in fact uh, zero force. 
and secondly it defines an inertial frame so now i need to know what is zero force when a body moves with a constant velocity in a straight line either there are no forces present or the net force acting on the body is zero that means sum of all the forces is equal to zero if the body changes its velocity then there must be an acceleration because when we say body changes its velocity that means we are talking about the rate of change of velocity so we it should have acceleration and hence a total non force must be present velocity can change due to change in its magnitude or due to change in its direction or change in both the next part of the newton first law was it was uh, giving inertial frame so let us see what is inertial frame if the relative velocity between the two reference frames is constant then obviously relative acceleration between these two reference frames will be zero and in general we denote acceleration by either small a or capital a which is rate of change of velocity so dv by dt is equal to zero and the relative frames are considered to be inertial reference frames and that is what we wanted to define so what in simple words i can say the inertial frame is the frame of reference in which first law holds first law means newton's first law holds here we have first one is reference frame r then it has moved to reference frame r des okay then i can find out what is the relation between r des and r using simple linear transformation i can say r des is equal to r minus vt what is v rate of change of displacement that is dr by dt and this is called galian transformation but make a note that the first law does not hold in any arbitrary frame for example it will fail in the frame of rotating turn table okay now let us talk about the second law of newtons if any force generates a change in the motion a double force will generate double change in the motion triple will correspond to triple change in the motion whether that force is impressed all together and at once or gradually or successively now this change of motion is described by change in the momentum of a body for a particle for a point mass particle the momentum is defined by mass into velocity and it is denoted by p so momentum p is equal to mass into velocity which is m into v suppose that a force is applied to a body for a time interval delta d delta t is very small then the impress force or impulse produces a change in the momentum of the body okay. let us de denote impress force by f bar this force is this impulse you can say or impulse force is force applied for a small interval of time delta t so f into delta d 
but we already know that that is nothing but the rate of change of momentum that is delta p so the instantaneous action of the total force acting on a body at a time t is defined by taking the limit mathematical limit as the time interval delta t becomes very small we have force f sorry we have two bodies with masses m1 and m2 so and force is applied on it momentum will be generated so m1 m1 and m2 a2 a1 and a2 are the accelerations this gives me ratio of the mass of the bodies to be equal to ratio of the accelerations that is m1 by m2 is equal to a2 by m1 a2 by a1 so i can define what is inertial mass in a total inertial mass is previous definition says under limiting case so limit delta t tends to zero delta p upon delta t but under limiting case it becomes what is rate of change of momentum with respect to t so i have total force to be derivative of mv with respect to t mass of the body is known to us so it is constant so i can have this as m into dv by dt and we know rate of change of velocity is nothing but the acceleration so f total is equal to mass into acceleration so what we establish inertial mass is equal to gravitational mass okay now newton's third law of motion consider two bodies engaged in a mutual interaction label bodies as one and two respectively like in a figure blue color represents body one yellow color represents body two f12 is the force on body one due to interaction with body two and f21 is the force on body two due to interaction with body one and newton's third law says that action and reaction are always equal and opposite so i have f12 is equal to minus f21 so i have newton's third law in terms of gravitational forces we have we know gravitational force is given by minus g that is gravitational like constant m1 m2 upon r square into distance r12 similarly i can find out f21 and that guarantees that r12 is equal to minus r21 if you talk about this in terms of uh, electric physics then we have a coulomb force that also gives me f12 is equal to minus f21 we all know that all real forces arise due to interactions if the acceleration of a body is the result of an outside force that is external force then somewhere in the universe there must be an equal and opposite force acting on the another body the interaction may be complicated one but as long as the forces are equal and opposite newton laws will get satisfied newton third law also emphasizes on conservation of momentum now we have these three laws and uh, we need to uh, say about validity there is no problem with first and second law 
that is they remain valid first law is always valid even if you add a pseudo force the second law which is f is equal to p dot holds but something has to be kept in mind that f and p have different expressions in relativistic frame okay and the third law is not valid in relativistic limit so we should know why third law is not valid in the relativistic frame consider two positive charges that is q1 and q2 okay. each of the positive charges q1 and q2 produces a magnetic field that exerts a force on the other charge and the forces are represented by f12 and f21 the resultant magnetic force f12 and f21 do not obey newton's third law of motion they will not be equal to minus f12 will not be equal to minus f21 or uh, i can say it, they are not equal and opposite okay and so momentum conservation is not valid okay. now what are the steps one should follow to apply newton's laws very first step divide a composite system into constituent system each of which can be treated as a point mass second step is draw free body force diagrams for each point next step introduce a coordinate system you can go with either a cartesian or a polar or a cylindrical one introduce inertial frame and write the equations of motions so third step is very important given a system i need to define coordinate system but uh, i mean a proper coordinate system inertial frame and then i need to write equations of motion step 4 motion of a body may be constrained to move along certain path or plane so it defines uh, what are the constraints in which motion is either restricted or can be done express each constraint by an equation and we call it a constraint equation step 5 identify the number of unknown quantities there must be enough number of equations and this equation uh, when you when i say enough number of equation uh, from the third step i have certain number of equations of motion and from fourth step i have certain constraints so when you want number of equation it is nothing but equations of motion and constraint equations to solve for all the unknown quantities let us see this example a 4 kg block rests on 6 kg block which rests on a frictionless table so no uh, friction forces are going to act on it coefficient of friction between blocks is 0.25 that can be friction between two boxes a force f of 10 newton is applied to a lower block so here is what this is a frictionless surface we have two blocks 4 kg is resting on 6 kg and uh, friction between 4 kg and 6 kg blocks is 
and uh, this force is 10 newton given and we want to have the equations so this is how it looks like if i consider obviously i should consider with the cartesian form so i have um, wb stands for the weight of block b w a weight of the block a so i have a cartesian system now this two cartesian systems should be properly gave us equations okay once again because first step was to choose the frame inertial frame our cartesian system as i say so i have a 6 kg block on which 4 kg block is resting so distance obviously from the center so y a and y b on y axis and x a and x b distance of the blocks from on x axis so obviously these boxes are fixed so i have first equation as y a is constant similarly i have y b also constant but when you look at x a and x b that is some constant involved in so x a equal to x b plus constant this constant can be negative also okay once again i brought back uh, for your ready reference the addition diagram first we i am finding what are the equations of motions in x and y direction what are the constraints and then we'll try to find out the solution okay first let us talk about the equations of motion in y direction m a that is mass of the body into acceleration of body a is given by n s minus w a minus n n s and n are in opposite direction and w a okay. similarly for second body m b y b double dot is equal to now only i have to equate n and w b and they are in opposite direction so i can say n minus w b what are the constraints because bodies are fixed i have no acceleration so y a double dot is zero y b double dot is zero so left hand side of the previous equation is zero and i can get what is n s from right side w a minus n and second equation gives me n minus w b equal to zero if some calculation only one step i need to work out because n is equal to w b and n s is equal to w a plus n so i can say n s is w a plus w b and n is equal to w b w stands for weight okay. now let us see about the x axis motion along x direction that means m a x a double dash is equal to f minus f1 because now I'm talking about the horizontal axis and MB XB is only F1. And what is constraint? Acceleration should, uh, both the bodies should be equal. So XA double dot is equal to XB double dot. Now, when you do some calculation from the first one and second one, I get XA double dot equal to XB double dot is equal to f upon m a plus m b and f1 is equal to m b x b double dot which is already given to be 4 newton okay so this is the force f1 is 4 newton and we were given total force f to be 10 newton so what i have the maximum frictional force between 
two blocks is thus less than 10 newton and hence the solution is consistent with assumptions so we had a we had a question we formulated cartesian frame for it and along x and y axis we formulated equation of motions with constraints in both the directions and then I found the solution which satisfies the assumption so my equations are valid. So this is what I wanted to say from my end. Thank you and I hope you have you will in future you will enjoy this mathematics of uh, fundamentals of mechanics. Thank you.